What screams I have a crush on you? Story 1. I knew a former co-worker was into me because of how much extra attention I got from her. Everyone in general was nice, but she was extra nice. She'd bring me snacks, eventually started giving me small presents, would tell me to go on my break even if I already knew it was time. I knew she trusted me when she gave me her laptop to take home for a few days so I could learn to use it and then teach her. Besides that, her actually asking me and being curious about what I'd really like for Christmas also helped in letting me know she cared. I did a lot of things that should have let her know I cared, liked her, but I guess I should have done more. Story 2. I feel like a pretty good tell that I've mainly noticed in myself is when someone acts the opposite social style they usually are around a specific individual. For me, I'm very shy, introverted and have social anxiety. However, if I have a crush on someone, I all of a sudden am able to start and carry on conversations and try to talk a little louder, confidently. I laugh, smile more whereas with other people I usually come off a little monotone and emotionless. I get more playful with a crush and so on and so forth. I have had very loud extroverted boisterous friends who, upon getting a crush on someone, become the total opposite around the crush. They get meek and timid and shy and overly conscious of what they're saying and how they're saying it. It's really interesting. Story 3. Oh the classic 2 am thoughts of why the frick did I say that of all things. I'll never forget, I was 13. I has a crush on this girl at my church. We texted back and forth for a while and eventually, as 13 year olds do, told each other we liked the other person. So things are going great, I've got my first real girlfriend and I knew her favorite color was pink. Out shopping with my mom one Saturday afternoon and fate plays right into my hands. On the clearance rack, a bright pink shirt. My size, $5. Oh man I could only imagine how I'd look walking down the aisle at our wedding day wearing this shirt. Next day at church it's going great. I see her looking at my shirt and she loves it. So after church she says I like your shirt and I respond I know you do. Dot 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 what the frick. She said well that's arrogant. And walked off. My two week relationship was over and devastated I threw the shirt away. Story 4. There was a girl who worked at a cafe who had a crush on me. Sometimes when I would start heading out, she would say Nawa, come on stay a while longer. I'll buy you some nachos. That's pretty damn hard to turn down. So she'd buy some nachos on employee discount and make a badass plate of nachos and then we'd sit and share it. Yeah, that's crush territory. Edit. I explained how things panned out underneath here. It's not a fairy tale ending but it is a happy one. We weren't meant for each other that way. I was meant to give her the help she so desperately needed and she was meant to teach me a lesson in the power of listening and giving a frick about someone beyond intercourse. We both changed each other's lives for the better over the course of a few months. Story 5. All of a sudden they start want to hang out with you more and subtly touch you more than before I. E hand on knee, elbow jab, poking, etc. Comparing hand sizes is such an easy yet overlooked method of subtle touching. But it really only works once unless there's a staggering difference in size. You also tend to brag or talk more than you would have done before in an attempt to gain their attention and whatnot. Or when you make random eye contact from across the room and they look away as if it was a crime to stare, only to look at you again later. Another small but true tidbit is that the one holding the crush will smile that smile you know that means that they're in love. I mean, who wouldn't smile when they're around their crush? It's almost impossible, other than when you're blushing like crazy and speechless as a fish. For whatever ungodly reason I always tried to be near them no matter how out of place it may be. I always tried to be strategical with this and be talking with a friend or have a reason to be where I am. Logic got thrown out the window the one day he decided to sit at my lunch table. But more so to sit without mutual friend than me, at least he knew my name. It's hard to hold a conversation during lunch when everyone's trying to jam a sandwich down their throat so that they can move on to cram for quizzes and exams last minute. Story 6. I had a girl do this in college. Wake me up same time every day with a shy knock on my door to see if I wanted to get breakfast. Obviously I never turned her down. She would also make an excuse to come around to everyone's room and say goodnight just so she could make my room the last room and stay in there longer and have no one notice, except my roommate. We were like the unofficial parents of the floor. We dated for two years. Story 7. Actually there are a couple of scientific studies which all seem to confirm the fact that women desire men who are either taken or desired by other women. In the study, women were shown pictures of a guy in the company of a woman, and then later on of the same guy but by himself. Women consistently gave higher attractiveness ratings to the picture of the guy with a woman, and lower attractiveness ratings to pictures of the same guy by himself. Also, the more attractive his female companion in the picture, the higher women rated him on attractiveness. Story 8. 
I waited for this girl's train who was my crush for an entire university year to try and get her interested in me. Even watched as multiple trains that I can take home left just so I could be on her platform. It took three months to get to talking, six months to getting each other's socials, ten months to be friends who sat at university, then twelve months to talk till midnight and later each night. Nothing, so I stopped seeing and talking to her. One week later she calls me up and wants to hang out. I said I had a party and she begged me to let her be my plus one. We went, hooked up after a few, and she stayed over. She's been my girlfriend for two years now and we are about to move in together. I quit the moral of the story is but I guess trying hard gets you nowhere. Or you don't know what you got till it's gone. Story 9. I was thrown a curveball. A girl I know out of the blue started talking to me more, sending me funny things, etc. When we hung out she would put pics of me on her Snapchat. She started to take an interest in motorcycles even though she had never been interested before. She also began to do this trust fall type of thing, where she'd routinely fall all over me. She would wrestle me and constantly poke me, too. I though okay, this girl totally has a crush on me. When I broached the subject, she acted slightly offended and denied ever liking me. I felt like a massive idiot. See why guys suck at making moves sometimes. Because a girl like that will just leave us forever questioning our judgment. Story 10. When a girl touches her hair a lot more than normal around someone she might be crushing. Doing things like absent-minded twirls around her finger while talking to them. Flipping it over her shoulder. Or exposing her neck and ears might be signs of interest. Also, look at people's feet. People may point them subconsciously at what they desire. Check if they have them pointed at a specific person constantly while in a crowd, or even towards the door. Whatever they point towards might be a clue about what they want. If the person's pupils are very dilated when you look at them in the eyes and they're sober, people's eyes will become dilated when they get that rush from looking at a crush so if you notice their eyes flashing larger after eye contact is made, they may be interested. This is really easy to see on someone with light blue eyes, but even dark brown ones will seem large when dilated. Hello, the editor here. That last story was too cool. Like and subscribe for more. Story 11. So story time there is a girl in the neighboring lab that is really nice to me. We sit next to each other in the office. Sometimes our legs or arms touch and she doesn't pull away. Also every now and then, outside of the office, she approached me just to talk about different things that are of interest to her or about her plans. Also at some point after 5 p.m. there was a relaxed environment in the office with several other people. And then most of them leave and then she shares a bit of gossip that one of these guys is the boyfriend of that girl in her group. And that nowadays it seems like everyone has a special other except for her. If that is not an invitation to date, I don't know what is. Later over several weeks we also went for a few dinners with her. Just me and her. Also a bit later, just before Christmas, she told me that she wants to go to Paris but she also has no one to go with. So I offer to go with her, we share the cost and stuff. Just for the weekend, one week after New Year, and both in the airplane and in trains she is very comfortable around me. In Paris we walk around the city in general, Louvre in particular and she is perfectly fine with my hand on her waist. By the way, all this time, she also is not reserved from holding my arm and stuff. So yeah, on the second day we go to the Eiffel Tower and on top of it I feel like this is the right time. So I tell her that I really like her and invite her to go on a date. I mean, a date which both of us would call a date. And she says that this is all completely out of the blue, unexpected and she would prefer to just stay friends. Yes, you read this right. Well, stay friends we did. But my point here is that all these signs that literally everyone here wrote about. With someone looking at you while you are not looking at them. Touching you frequently. Giving you what seems to be like a clue that she is available. And inviting you to ask her out. But ultimately all of these cues can be just parts of a person's general demeanor. Or just a sign that she is comfortable with you and likes you but only as a friend. Story 12. Does it make me a psychopath that I know how to make people feel liked and how to get them to like you back? You compliment something that seems really genuine. Eyes, laugh, hair, shoulders etc. if you're forward. You notice small changes, haircuts, change in makeup, new clothes and shoes and mention it. Then share small details about yourself that will make them feel like they really know you a fear, a favorite childhood memory, etc. while getting them to talk about themselves a lot. Be charming but not overly so add in some endearing fault like clumsiness or a slight stutter when you get overwhelmed. 
and 2098 the way that they stand casually, or the way they move their hands it automatically makes people like you more. Story 13 One summer in college, I met this really cool, adorable girl through work. I felt like I could be myself around her. One day she invited me to go play Halo at her place. Being a complete idiot that I was, I thought nothing of it and actually brought the original Xbox. Halo Combat evolved and a couple of controllers to her place. We then proceeded to sit down and actually play Halo on her couch. Something didn't quite feel right when I noticed that she didn't even know the basic controls, and yet she seemed really hyped about it originally. Also, she kept trying to cuddle me. Anyway, I was too focused on having Master Chief teabagging dead bodies to notice that she probably didn't want to actually play Halo. Story 14 Every time I'm around this girl she starts flipping her hair back and forth exposing her neck, running her hair through her hands, switching sides, adjusting it, smoothing it, fixing it, tucking it behind her ear for the fifth time, etc. you know, preening. Good thing I had a crush on her too. I wanted to make sure, so I checked her out through the window before entering the office. She was acting normal. I walked in, said hello to everyone, and bam. Her eyes go down, she won't look at me. But her hair is going back and forth like one of those shampoo commercials. This has happened with two younger women currently at my work. But since JR High I notice girls do it and what it means. Sadly, the two stopped doing it once they got to know me. I'm not sure how to interpret that. Story 15 I guess this is more of a personal story but my boyfriend told me that it made him love coming to school. He used to be what I thought was the bad boy. Bad in the sense that he never came to school or rather, if he did come to school, he'd skip to hang with his buddies at McDonald's or something. He got a crush on me and all of a sudden he was staying all day. My dad worked early so I had to be dropped off at school at like 6 and wait 2 hours for school to start. He asked his mom to drop him off early so I wouldn't be alone. He started doing better in classes. He wasn't about to graduate and put in so much work to make sure we could walk together on graduation. Going on 5 years together and he moved in recently. Story 16 A lot of these comments make me feel slightly better about a crush I developed for a girl I worked with. She would do a lot of these little things that had me convinced she was into me but after I talked to her about it she just wanted to be friends. Examples After just the first few weeks working together she started parking next to me so we would always walk out together. She'd also keep the conversation going once we got to our cars unless she had somewhere to be. Whenever we would be working together she would sit close to me and occasionally have something. Foot, leg, arm, rest against me and not pull away. When we were working in a group she'd try to sit next to or directly across from me. She'd definitely look my direction during laughing. Joke moments that a few people have mentioned here. Occasionally touch to my shoulder or arm when walking by and saying hello or goodbye. When we and other coworkers would make plans to all hang out she'd try to get there early as I usually would. And if we were all doing something at her place she'd ask me to come over early and help set things up or stay late to help clean. She'd make comments about wanting to go for rides in my car, I drive a Maeda. We would text a lot, and she would ask for advice about outfits she had to wear to weddings and other events she was going to. She has plans to move for a dream job and would say things like when I fly you out to visit me. She had plans for a fun convention trip that she invited me to go with on too. She sought my advice or help on a lot of various other things too, way more than she did anyone else. And I'm sure I'm missing other things too, but after all of it it was a just friend situation. So even the things that seem like it may not be, but at least I know I'm not crazy for thinking they were.